Hi, I'm Rich with Inside HPC. We're here at ISC 2016 in Frankfurt, Germany, and today we're at the Cool IT Systems booth with the CEO, Jeff Lyon. How are you doing today, sir? Doing great, it's been an excellent show for us. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's winding down here, but I'm glad we had a chance to catch up because it's a lot has been going on with Cool IT. And I'd like to start there. Can, can you bring us up to speed in the last couple of months? It seems like a number of announcements around your business that are interesting. Well, I, I think part of it is that liquid cooling on the whole is on the rise. Right, people have already recognized that liquid cooling is going to be a future, uh, a part of the future for the the information technology industry, and we're kind of coming along with that trend. Um, but at the same time, we're very proud of the progress that we've had with some of our uh, projects with OEMs that we can finally talk about, um, as well as some of the developments on our our corporate side um, that will allow us to service our customers worldwide. Okay, and. Just to, you know, the, the history here is interesting, but there seems to be a lot of developments with processors, increasing amounts of cores, things we've talked about before that are making liquid cooling almost a, a, a given that you have to do this in this space, isn't it? Well, I, I think that although there's still an ability to do air cooling for some of the higher power chips that are coming out, it's becoming less and less practical, yeah. right? So we, we hear things like, um, you know, in the accelerator chips from, from both uh, NVIDIA and from Intel, the uh, the power levels on a single chip is has skyrocketed. It's gone from you know what would normally be maybe 150 as a maximum on a CPU to now with uh, things like Knight's Landing or the the Intel Phi or Xeon Phi, um, they're much more than 150. It's more like 250 or even higher in some cases. Well, one deal I, I wanted to ask you about is this uh, uh, alliance you have with Stoltz. These guys do cooling in the IT centers, right? And you guys do, you're really the specialist at removing heat from the point where it's created, but how does how will you work together? Well, we, we got together with the Stoltz group. We were actually uh, attempting to find a way for us to, um, to service our growing customer base. Um, you know, we've been working hard with the, the different OEMs inside the server, but then with liquid cooling, that's not the end of the story. Um, we, we can get the heat out of the box, we get it into the manifold in the rack, but then we've got to take it out of the data center altogether. And by teaming up with Stulls, we now have uh, an ability to, to tell the whole story, right? So liquid cooling like ours, we grab maybe 70%, 80% in some cases of the heat that's generated, that still leaves you know, 30, 20% that's going into the air. By teaming up with Stulls, we now have an ability to take care of that heat uh, in one conversation. So we come to the customer and we can say, all right, you know, here's the liquid cooling and here is the residual air cooling that's required and now we can go into the, the Stulls uh, infrastructure capabilities and say, all right, we'll, we'll take all that heat and we'll take it outside and we can dissipate it. Or we can help them reuse it potentially for other useful purposes like, um, you know, building heat or, you know, like NREL is, you know, melting the ice off their sidewalks with the heat that's generated in their data center. Yeah. Well, let's switch gears here a bit. I wanted to go on a booth tour. Can you help me out there and show us what you got this year? Yeah, you bet, of course. So what we're looking at here is actually one of the biggest announcements that we made at the show was actually the launch of the uh, OEM solution we did together with Lenovo. Um, so in the past, uh, as, as most people know, the IBM group that was the x86 server division, that was purchased by Lenovo. And they've since actually continued to sell the next scale system. And the, the next scale system used to be 100% copper loop. Uh, and we've worked very diligently together with Lenovo to transition that design from pure copper over to a hybrid of a, a copper rails with our standard uh, R4 CPU blocks uh, and in, have this tightly integrated design um, be able to service their uh, liquid cooling requirements. Um, so with this system, it's quite elaborate. Uh, it has the ability to not only grab the CPU heat on the four CPUs that are here, but also is actually got a, um, a, a system that will gather the heat from voltage regulation, um, from chipset, uh, and then even sometimes there's an ability to expand that to uh, 
mezzanine cards or, or other uh, peripherals. What we have here is a system that we've actually worked together with Dell on. Um, so this is the, the Dell PowerEdge 6320. And with this system, it's actually quite simple. We're just grabbing the heat from both CPUs, but that allows the, the fan power to be reduced significantly um, and the, the density of the entire rack system to be quite high without having to run uh, huge amounts of, of fan power and additional cooling infrastructure like crack power and so on. Um, but it was a, um, a, a nicely validated solution uh, and we're excited to be having a, an opportunity to work together with Dell. So this is a, a system that we developed together with NEC. Uh, in fact, it was actually a, a collaboration between NEC, Supermicro, uh, and Cool IT to be able to support the new Knight's Landing chip. Um, so with uh, the Intel Xeon Phi you know, X200 series, um, there's a lot of excitement around deployments for that uh, in highly dense configurations. So this is an example of one of those configurations that's actually now being actively put forth for, for various different tenders and, and opportunities in the business. Um, so the, the, the larger footprint that's required for the Knight's Landing chip, we've actively cooled not only the CPU that's in the middle, but also providing liquid flow over top of the, um, the MCD RAM that's inside the chip, as well as the OmniPath networking fiber. So what we have here is actually a new take on actually a little bit of our legacy. Um, so if for those that have, have known Cool IT Systems for a long time, we actually have most of our heritage and experience in the, in the gaming industry. Uh, and what people like to do there is overclock their chips. Um, so the, the value proposition is to be able to, to increase the power going into the chip that can support a higher response frequency. Um, so by, by building this special closed loop system, these, here I can show this a little bit, it's actually a closed loop system that has a small radiator here, and it's, an, it's able to support a much higher level of power at the chip level, and by doing that, the, the higher power going into the chip can support a much higher frequency. Um, so uh, essentially this is overclocking in the server space and with that overclocking capability there's a very specific market that has good use for that. They call it the trade and match uh, industry. So high frequency trading in the finance industry um, as I understand it there's a lot of money to be made by making your transaction first. Um, so we wish them luck in, in being able to do that and we we're very excited to have a chance to work together with HP on this. Okay, so what we're looking at here is actually a nice display of a case study that we did on uh, an installation that was uh, taking place in, in 2015. Um, it's one of our larger installations. It's a 20 rack install uh, in Poland's uh, PSNC. Um, the, the exciting part about this was that we, we not only had to liquid cool the system, but the requirement was that we had to capture 80% of the heat in the server. So to do that, we cooled not only the CPUs, but we also cooled the voltage regulation and the RAM. Um, so by, by capturing that much of the heat and then taking that liquid flow right out to a dry cooler, this data center is now operating at a PUE of under 1.05. And we are super happy to have a chance to work together with Huawei, um, IT project and S4E to be able to bring this project to light. In order to actually deal with all the heat that we had in this large installation, the most practical solution for us is to have this large form factor CDU. So we call it the CHX650. It has the ability to deliver over 360 liters a minute of flow, which can operate approximately you know, seven or 800 nodes at a time. Uh, and then uh, in order to, to have a little bit of redundancy, we actually have two of these systems installed in the POSNAN installation, uh, which is providing all of the cooling circulation required in order to actually dissipate all that heat in a reliable fashion. So this is a, a very exciting point in time for us. We're actually just now releasing the CHX80. Um, now, we, one of our, our most successful products to date has been the CHX40, which is capable of dissipating about 40 kilowatts at uh, an incoming facility water uh, temperature of 30 degrees, 
This is capable of doing over 80 kilowatts with a facility flow of 30 degrees. If you actually have cool chilled water, then the capacity of this unit would be even higher, closer to 125 or even 130 kilowatts. But in order to maintain our ability to do warm water cooling and keep that at a high capacity, high density level, we engineered this solution to only be 4U high. It mounts inside the rack and can service up to 120 nodes. Um, so even the most dense configurations that are being contemplated, even in this hall of the high performance compute space, this is a, a, a very scalable unit that can be used on a rack by rack basis. So what we have here is a display of the Ninja developer platform. Now this is an exciting opportunity for cool IT systems. We actually were contacted by Intel in order to support the Xeon Phi product as a whole. Now, we worked on this for a couple of years and it's nice to finally see this come out in the, in the open and be displayed. Um, but we actually have a closed loop system inside this desktop. So we're cooling the Xeon Phi um, to keep the, the, the level of the fan very quiet with a large form factor radiator, which is actually in the top of the desktop. So the, the idea here is that Nin Intel is wanting to give developers an opportunity to work directly with the new architecture of the chip uh, to develop software so those applications can be working on these large clusters that are all around. Uh, and since developers don't always have a cluster at their disposal, uh, this seems like a very convenient way to support that architecture. So Jeff, just to summarize, there seems to be a lot of innovation going on with cool IT systems and, and a growing marketplace for liquid cooling. Uh, can you summarize what we just went through here in the booth tour? Well, I think we're getting a sense now that cool IT systems at one stage was kind of a component supplier company. What we're transitioning to now is a solutions company. You know, we're conferring with our, our end customers along with our partners to deliver a, a holistic solution um, to bring the promise of liquid cooling into practical reality, make it a, a cost efficient venture and an, uh, a, an extremely cost efficient mechanism to operate going forward. So we're, we're very proud that we've had the progress and the opportunity and the help of our partners uh, to be able to scale the, the profile of liquid cooling up and we're happy that uh, the chips are getting more and more powerful, which certainly helps our business.